sophisticated, isolated, So which car is this Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde vehicle? It's definitely the 2017 Nissan Maxima. Cause look at it, on the outside we have Mr. Hyde, but on the inside is Dr. Jekyll. So let's get into this. So let's start with Dr. Jekyll, the interior. The moment you sit in this car, you feel the comfort. Your elbows rest right where they need to with great soft touch material and these seats. These seats are wonderful. The moment you get into it, it curves around your body and holds it in place. Now, I'm a big guy. Me being horizontally blessed, I have no problems with pressure points on my back, which is fantastic. So revisiting the soft touch materials, like right here, right here, on my elbows, right where I need it, there's great padding. On the steering wheel, amazing padding like it feels good in your hands even the little touches down to the side where your knees rest great padding and if you're to get into god forbid an accident your knees are gonna be okay and up here where they really didn't need any soft touch material they put it here now here's where we're getting into the um, cheaper plastics and whatnot but it's still got good texture and good looks to it. It seems as though there is an artificial leather on top. And these are the small little touches that Nissan took to really give you that premium driving experience. So let's talk about practicality in the Nissan Maxima's cabin. It's decent, but you can tell that their primary focus was to give the driver a more luxurious feeling cabin. Just look at this interior, the way it's designed the way it looks, the way that everything flows in together, as well as something a little bit more visually stunning and visually appealing. And it took away from some of that practicality, like the door bins, they're not that big. Um, there's not a lot of storage in the middle compartment, but it will do the job for someone who's, you know, dailying it in terms of going to work, coming back, going out with friends. But if you're looking for exceptional cabin space in terms of storage, this is not where you want to look. The great thing about the Maxima's placement of everything, everything feels natural. Like where your hands fall, they feel natural. Um, where your fingers will fall, it feels natural. Even to the point where your push button start is right next to the gear lever, it's telling you once you press on, you're gonna go. So the Nissan Connect system is very good. Now this does come with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Everyone has made a video on that, so I'm not gonna talk about that. But what I wanna talk about is what you get if you do not connect your phone in that manner. You get a very responsive, very intuitive system. Like, if you need your audio, there's a strip, there's a ribbon at the bottom that gives you your phone, your audio, your phone, your information, main menu, map, navigation, and settings. Very straightforward, and if you ever get lost in menus, there's a menu button here, map and audio. What you need the most. And this is very good thinking and very good interfacing for the driver. So you're not distracted when you're driving down the road. Now the only thing that really reminds you that you're in a sports sedan is this steering wheel's flat bottom wheel. And other than that, I would honestly think that I'm in a luxury sedan. So for me, I'm about 5'10". Now, if I get into the driver's seat, I sit down, I'm comfortable. Whoever's sitting behind me, if they're about the same size, being horizontally blessed as well as lengthwise, you have about three inches of leg room to spare. So continuing on with the rear seat space, look at this. I have about two to three inches of space. My legs are well under the seat with great space. I'm comfortable. On top of that, if I drop this down, I'm really comfortable. I feel like I'm in the driver's seat only because there is great padding here, great padding here. There's two cup holders and a cell phone tray. Good job, Infinity. I mean, Nissan. I thought this was an Infiniti back here. The rear trunk, 
has a lot of space. I'm in here with a bunch of other things like a vacuum cleaner and something else, another bag. It can still hold me. If it was empty, it probably could hold two of me. So that means you could probably hold three dead bodies in total. Yes, I'm counting myself as one and a half person. Now, speaking about dead bodies, let's go into the other part of this car, the exterior, Mr. Hyde. So, what catches your eye right off the bat? Well, what caught my eye was the front fascia. Just look at it. It looks nice. Nice, sexy, aggressive, and slick. This is inspired by Samurai Warriors. This front looks like the Kabuto helmet that Samurais used to wear right in front. Throughout the rest of the car, in the body molding, the sculpting, it has hints of weaponry and armor that the Samurai Warriors used to wear. And I'll show you what I mean. The headlights and taillights are another prime example of where Nissan really took the Samurai heritage and made it their own in a way. So this particular headlight, the way it doubles back on itself, reminds me of a Judas sword, which was one weapon that Samurais often used. Just look at the way the lines flow down the side of the body. It looks as though it's guiding the air right down the side, giving him the illusion that it's fighting right through the air with a sense of graceful brutality. All right, finally, look at this roof line. Look at this rear roof line. It looks so good, especially with this little divider. It makes it look like it's hovering. I know that some other manufacturer has it, but with this entire body style, it just looks so sexy. It's sexy as f <laughs> All right. So we've talked about the inside, the outside, all that greatness. But what does that really mean? Until and unless we get to driving it, right? So let's go ahead and do that. The Nissan Maxima is a very luxurious drive. No doubt about it. But how I look at it, it's more of a grand tour than any type of four-door sports car or sports sedan. Despite on what Nissan's badged all over the the car with its uh, 4DSC uh, badging on the headlights. It drives very smoothly, soaking up bumps uh, with its four-wheel independent suspension uh, and a lot of the smoothness and the allure of comfort and isolation comes out of the cabin on how it's manufactured. What I mean by that is there are no intrusive noises. There is not, there's no intrusive road noise. There's no intrusive uh, rattles. There are no intrusive noises, which really adds to the sophistication of the Nissan Maxima's interior. Even the transmission shifts are smooth. And that's because it's paired with the CVT, a continuously variable transmission. From what I understand, Nissan wanted to ensure that the Maxima owners were not crying at the fuel pumps as Infinity owners would be. So they put in the CVT for maximum fuel savings. And for that very reason, the CVT, it's not bad, but it's again, not sporty enough. So the Nissan Maxima's fuel efficiency, according to the FuelGov website, you're looking at a 9.4 combined, so 9.4 liters for every 100 kilometers combined city and highway. Individually, 11.2 for city driving and 7.8 highway driving, which is actually not that bad um, for such a big engine vehicle. I know the average vehicle takes about 7.4 uh, liters, but you're getting so much more power out of this. And I think it's worth it. The Maxima contains a 3.5 liter engine, which produces 300 horsepower and 261 foot-pounds of torque, giving you a 0 to 60 time in 5.9 seconds. The engine itself is very responsive. However, the responsiveness is dwindled by the CVT that comes paired with this engine. It works great in straight line pulls because it's a CVT, but when it comes down to fluctuations in speed, it doesn't effectively deal with that. Now this is a front wheel drive car with no other drivetrain options like no all wheel drive, no rear wheel drive option. The great thing is 
When accelerating in a straight line under pressure, the traction control does a very good job of not giving a lot of torque steer. Now, here and there when you're going over bumps, you're gonna feel the torque steer. In regular conditions, perfectly fine. Pretty good for a front wheel drive vehicle in terms of straight line performance. So the steering, very linear, well weighted, but very numb. And what I mean by that is when you're turning, you know exactly what your wheels are doing, you know where they're going, but if you're ever taking a harder turn or you're going over certain imperfections, you don't feel it all that much in the wheel. And if you are trying to do any performance driving, which I don't recommend in this particular vehicle, but if you are looking to do any type of performance driving, it is not going to be a very visceral driving experience. The 2017 Maxima is a little bit lower than the generation it replaces. To me, it feels very similar in terms of body roll. Where the car handles a little bit better is in the rear. So the rear suspension has been redone and it does feel better. So what I love most about the Nissan Maxima in terms of its drive is how it drives around town. If you're in a city with lots of potholes, lots of people, lots of things going on. You're in your own little cocoon. That makes it wonderful if you're ever stuck in traffic, especially with the adaptive cruise control. If you're stuck behind construction and the roads are getting very bad. These are the things that make me really enjoy the Nissan Maxima. On top of that, this is more of a family sedan than any type of sports car to me hands down so at the end of the day who is this car for this car is for someone who drives daily isn't really into the whole engagement of driving they just want something a little more comfortable uh, a little bit more isolated as well as something that they can forget their their day in and that's what the maxima does really well you forget about what's around you what's happened because it drives nicely throughout your everyday drive or throughout the city. And on top of that, it has the power if you ever wanna just put your foot down. You can definitely do that. It also looks stunning. And that's one of the great things about this car. It's a great balance. It's for someone who really just wants a daily commuter, point A to point B, um, with a comfortable ride. If you're looking for a sports car, this is not it. I've said that multiple times, Nissan lied to me when they said this is a four-door sports car. It's just a four-door fast family car, which is not a bad thing. It depends on what your priorities are, right? Right?